In today's video, we are back in my hometown of Rockland, California, and we're gonna be photographing a tomb underneath the stars. Hey guys, I'm Dylan and welcome to my channel. Behind me in that pyramid lies Joel Parker Whitney. Joel Parker Whitney came to this area in 1852 and he absolutely loved it. He loved it so much so that he decided to purchase 140 land parcels which then became Whitney Oaks Ranch. This ranch had a vast footprint spanning all the way from Rockland to Lincoln. There's a lot of beauty in this portion of Northern California. You have the beautiful oak trees, the green rolling hills in the spring that then become golden in the summer. And although I grew up here, I didn't actually know much about Joel Parker Whitney, nor did I know about this tomb behind me. Not until I was actually golfing with a buddy of mine down here and we drove past it on the 11th green of the golf course. And after driving past it, I always kind of thought, man, it would look pretty cool under some stars. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. We're gonna see if this suburban area will actually be dark enough skies or if the light pollution is gonna blind the stars. So this evening, you guys will not be a part of the shoot because I'm gonna use both cameras to get some photos. So I really like this area right here. Yeah, I think we're gonna do the 16. So I really like this composition. You've got these granite rocks that are kind of just going from the very bottom of the, the screen here all the way up. It's very pleasing. So I really think there's a composition right here. Um, right here, the wall just dips down and I think we can work with it. Back it out to there. Yeah, that looks nice. Man, these skeeters, man. Oh, they're freaking everywhere. Okay. I should have brought bug spray. That was really dumb of me. I think we're gonna get a little bit more intimate with the pyramid. We kind of have some good outside establishing shots that uh, I think we're gonna use. Ah, okay. Let's do it. Let's do it now. So it's pretty tight in here but I love this dead tree kind of like wisping around and then it goes straight up into the pyramid and we should be getting star trails with it at that point. Question is, what is the angle we want it to be? Yeah, this one's gonna be really tough because you have the tree right there too. I'm thinking more of a vertical for this one. Okay, I think that's really gonna be it. All right, hi, sorry. I. Uh... I know I said that I was gonna be done with you guys, but I lied. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do my blue hour photos. So the sky is pretty done right now. Um, there's not too much light, so I'm gonna take them. So these are essentially going to be focus stacked for my foreground, and then I'm gonna come back out here. Oh my gosh. All right, I, I gotta do this quick. Focus bracket, 10. Number of shots, only going to take the amount for the camera to actually focus everything. Sort at the bottom. Look at that, only two. It only needed two. Only needed two, thank God. All right, well, uh, I'm tired of getting bitten, so uh, I'm gonna put the camera down and just take down these shots right now. So I'll see you guys in a bit.
And those were the images I got from Parker Whitney's tomb. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Um, as far as an editing standpoint is concerned, they were extremely difficult to edit. A lot more difficult than my other Star Trails photos that I've edited in the past. And the reason for this was I used the blue hour uh, composition as well as going back out to shoot the star trails. And when I got back out there, my composition for the star trails was not the exact same spot of each picture. So just overlaying them was really difficult. And the dead tree limbs were, were really tough. Luckily, I did find a way in Photoshop to figure out how to actually composite them and yeah i learned a valuable lesson that even though you have multiple tools to do one thing don't use all of them at once so if i do decide to do blue hour photos again just stay in the location don't pack up keep the tripod where it's at and if i don't go that route and i decide to shoot later in the night just make sure that i shoot longer exposures of the actual foreground leading up to the stars. Another technique I used in the field, which I will be taking away and implementing more in my star trail photography is my ISO. So typically I shoot close to 1600. This time I shot around 400 ISO. And the reason for that is on photo pills, they talk about how it brings out more color in the stars. And that's very visible in these photos to me. To the naked eye, stars are white, but in actuality, they live on a color spectrum. You've got light blue, blues, yellows, oranges, whites, and a lot of those colors I was able to capture in these images, which I'm super stoked about, and I'll be definitely implementing this further on in other shoots. And if you are interested in upping your astrophotography game, I highly recommend you looking at Photo Pills. They have so many guides of capturing so many different celestial bodies in the night sky and in the daytime too. So I have them linked in my description below. Check them out. If you liked the video, please give it a big old thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for so much more content like this. I'd really appreciate it. And comment down below which photo from Joel Parker Whitney's tomb you enjoyed the most. But that's it for this one. I'm Dylan, but you can call me Bubba. Enjoy your weekend.